Don't forget to hit up Rose NBA on Twitter. This man will grind it out for you. He'll do your spotlight sims and your 12 and O's. Whatever you need, he's got it. What is good, YouTube? And welcome back to a brand new video. And today we have yet another off-season realistic rebuild. We're still doing teams that haven't made the playoffs. Uh, we actually only have two left, though. So the Pelicans and the Bulls. But uh, we might see a Celtics one tomorrow, depending on if the Celtics get eliminated tonight. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, but this Pelicans one we haven't done yet either. So uh, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. 6% of you watching this aren't even subbed. And I'd appreciate you if you hit that subscribe button. It'd be very, very helpful to my heart. It makes me feel a lot better. But uh, the Pelicans, man, uh, you know, obviously they should have maybe been a borderline playoff team this last season. They were rather disappointing, and uh, there's a lot of rumors about their head coach and what they're going to do with him, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into this rebuild, and we're going to see what we're going to do with this team, and hopefully we can make this team a championship team by the end of it. It should be pretty easy because, as we all know, the Pelicans are pretty good in 2K as it is anyway. Realistically speaking, I know there's been a lot of talk about Stan Van Gunny, whether he's going to get fired or not. I think they literally just hired... Well, I don't think. I mean, this is what I think anyway. They just hired him, so I can't imagine they would fire him after one season. But, you know, it's happened before. I just don't think it's going to happen this time. I think they're going to keep him around. But there is a lot of rumors that, uh, the, you know, the players aren't clicking with Stan Van Gundy. It's not working out. So, I assume if another season goes south, then he'll be fired. Uh, but for now, I feel like he's probably safe and is going to keep his job. Uh, but other than that, guys, let's just go straight to the NBA draft. The Pelicans are going to land around 9, 10, 11 in the draft, I think. So I think we have the ninth pick here. So that could definitely be helpful to us in three second rounders, which is also awesome. So no changes on the coaching staff. Uh, we're just going to go straight to the draft. And at number nine, we're going to be selecting whoever falls to us. So I'm going to go in and see kind of who's been taken so far. So at number nine, we have Jalen Green going number one. Evan Mobley going number two to the Pistons. Magic get Cade Cunningham. So <laughs> even more guards for the Orlando Magic. Greg Brown to the Thunder. Jalen Suggs to the Cavaliers. Deshaun Nix uh, to the Warriors. We have Raptors getting John Kamenga. Jalen Johnson is going eight to the Kings, and here we are with our pick. And we have guys like Scotty Barnes and Jane Springer, but of course, I'm not going to take uh, Scotty Barnes in this video. We do need a two guard. Uh, Nikel Alexander Walker is there, and Jane Springer seems like the guy that I should be bringing in. I'm either looking at him or BJ Boston. And I think I'm going to grab Jane Springer here with this ninth pick. If he slips all the way to New Orleans, I think that would be a great selection for them. So let's go ahead and go to our second rounder. Probably going to draft at least one of these second rounders to kind of see uh, what we can kind of grab out here. We have Kai Jones. I'm going to take. Uh, Kai Jones out here. We're going to send to the end on that. And just like that, uh, we have uh, Jane Springer, Kai Jones coming in, Wendell Moore, DJ Jeffries. I'm going to sign all my second round picks because you never have enough young talent on a young roster who's rebuilding. Player options got Najee Marshall, Winnie and Gabriel, and uh, I'm not too worried about those other guys. And then qualifying offers, of course, Josh Hart. And the big question is Lonzo Ball. Uh, we haven't even addressed this yet. Josh Hart, I imagine, you know, the Pelicans wouldn't be fine bringing him back. But what are the Pelicans going to do with Lonzo Ball? If I'm completely honest with you, I feel like this could go either way. I feel like the Pelicans could either maybe do a sign and trade. They could either choose to not match somebody's offer or they could match any offer. So I feel like I'm not going to get this. I feel like whatever I do in this video, I'm not going to get it correct because I feel like Lonzo Ball could literally do anything and literally could be in Chicago. He could be in, I don't know, man. Like, I just don't know where Lonzo Ball is going to go. I don't know if the Pelicans are too keen on keeping him. He did play better down the stretch. I think it makes sense to keep him around, but like I said, I don't know how much the Pelicans value him, so I couldn't tell you. And no, I'm not a Pelicans fan if you're watching me for the first time. I'm just wearing a Pelicans shirt, okay? I'm a Blazers fan. But anyway, uh, one thing I do kind of want to address this offseason is Steven Adams, because we all know Adams and Zion isn't the best fit in the front court spot. So if we could get like a probably a center who could space the floor just a little bit better, that would be kind of ideal. Eric Bledsoe, also a guy that, you know, you just don't really want here anymore. Uh, the Bucks got rid of him for a reason, and look what they're doing now. And then Eric Bledsoe obviously was kind of, eh, at best, this whole season for the Pelicans. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of changes I want to make, starting with some of these veterans. So, like, Adams could be safe. There's also Eric Bledsoe, who I want to trade away. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the Eric Bledsoe one, though. I kind of just want to get rid of him for, like, whatever it takes, man. He's on an expiring contract. They can decline his team option. His money is not guaranteed. So, I'm just going to go ahead and start out with the Eric Bledsoe trade, kind of see what I can get. And hopefully, I can just dump his contract off. Uh, or maybe we could make a big trade, you know, that somebody may not want somebody and we go ahead and grab them. But I'm not sure who that would be out there. But hopefully we can find something that way we can get rid of uh, Eric Bledsoe and possibly even Steven Adams, depending on how things go. See, the Miles Turner trade rumor has been there forever. And I just feel like it makes the most sense for the Pelicans to get, get to go get Miles Turner just because he's literally 25 years old, can space the floor a lot better than Steven Adams can. 
He can also play defense at the rim. I think it's just the best fit next to Zion Williamson. I feel like I do this a lot whenever I do a Pelicans rebuild, realistically, but I just feel like this makes the most sense. And the Pacers, of course, also just didn't make the playoffs, so that's why it makes even more sense if they were potentially going on a fire sell. The Pacers could go ahead and trade Miles Turner away, and they could get a, you know, a plethora of assets. You got Najee Marshall, second round pick, a first round pick, Kai Jones, and Eric Bledsoe to make the money work. So I think this makes a lot of sense. Uh, Indiana gets an expiring contract, a bunch of young assets for a 25-year-old center who can shoot and play defense. I like this trade. The Pacers agree. And just like that, we got our center that I wanted. And then, of course, we still have Steven Adams here. So Miles Turner is the guy I wanted next to Zion Williamson, and I'm very, very happy about that. But, of course, Steven Adams also someone I don't really want anymore necessarily because we have Miles Turner now. So where is Steven Adams going to go? I'm not sure, but we're going to go ahead and start out with him. And kind of see what we can get rid of or who we can get rid of or who we're gonna get to get rid of Steven Adams this we're a team that almost made the playoffs this last season and of course they're gonna try to get even better with Gordon Hayward still being there and getting Steven Adams to be your center because the Hornets haven't had a legitimate center in quite some time so they go ahead and send me Vernon Carey in a top three protected pick for Mr. Steven Adams and Charlotte gives themselves a center that could definitely help them out defense and give them a little bit more aggressive down or a little bit of a better solution down low because it's always been Cody Zeller so I feel like that's probably better for them anyway so that's with all the moves all the veterans I wanted to get rid of and I'm excited about that and then now to the free agency part of the video so obviously looking at the team right now you got Kerry Lewis Jr. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker James Springer Zion or Ingram Wesley Wundu Zion Williamson Wendy Gabriel and you got Jackson Hayes Miles Turner I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Vernon Carey Jr. to the power forward spot just because uh, we don't really need him at the center, so we're going to do that. Uh, we'll have a front court kind of set, Ingram. And then, honestly, we just need Lonzo Ball back, and we have a full rotation because that's who I want back. Like I said, I don't know if New Orleans is going to match whatever offer he gets or if they're going to pay him or not. I have a good feeling they are going to try to bring him back. If he does not come back, I think it'll be a sign and trade, though. I think that's what will happen. But I can't predict the future, so I visually have no idea what's going to happen with Lonzo because I feel like it could go a plethora of ways. So... Um, he's not getting an offer so far though. He has 12 offers now. Okay. So I imagine he's going to take one soon. Um, no, he still doesn't have that. Okay. So I guess I could see him getting around 20 million in the off season, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know if he'll accept that though. It might be a low ball for him. Yeah. He declined. Okay. So yeah, that was his best offer and he does not want it. So I guess at this point you give him 25 million and I'm cool with that. Lonzo Ball and two back to New Orleans. Like I said, I could see him getting around 20 million in the offseason, depending on what team offers him a contract like that. So player progression wise, we got um, Zion Williamson, 80, uh, 92, Ingram, 87, Lonzo Ball, 83. So we kind of have our uh, starting five back uh, along with Miles Turner here as well. I'm excited. I'm excited with all the veterans being moved. Adams is gone. Lonzo Ball is here. You got uh, Eric Bledsoe gone, Miles Turner coming in. So I'm excited about this. I really am. The spacing is a lot better around Zion Williamson, I like to think. So training camps, on top potential wise, we're going to throw some at, uh, so this at Lonzo Ball, I guess. And let's throw the last one at Miles Turner just because he came over and we wanted to be honestly legit next to Zion. So this is what our starting five looks like right now, which I'm actually really excited about. So Lonzo Ball, Jane Springer, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, Miles Turner, Jackson Hayes, Nikel, Carey Lewis Jr., Vernon Carey. That's actually a really good defense, or not a good, a really young squad. I really like how this looks, and I'm excited to kind of see how it turns out. So proficiency-wise, three and a half at pace and space. Um, I guess we'll leave it at pace and space for now. Kind of see how things go. I imagine we'll be in the playoffs because the Pelicans always seem to kill it in the simulation, but you never know because I'm controlling the team, and my luck in 2K is, eh, it, 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 it definitely wavers, but we'll see how it goes. Let's go ahead and simulate season number one. And let's see how this Pelicans roster performs. This season, we finished as the first team in the West. And I would tell you I'm surprised, but I'm not, man. This Pelicans team always does good in simulations here on 2K. They love Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram. I, I mean, I assume it's just the Zion part, but man, like I said, I'm not shocked at all. So uh, we ended up as the first seed in the West Conference. Here's your All-NBA first team. Um, All-NBA second team. I imagine we're going to see Zion here somewhere. We do not. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Boom. All defense first team, all defense second team. We did get Lonzo Ball making an all defensive team, though. That's cool. And then, uh, all right, so we are 50, we went 58 and 24. Player stats wise, we had 25 from Brandon Ingram, 23 from Zion, 16 from Jane Springer, and 13 from Zion, or from Lonzo, and nine to go along with that. Nikel with uh, 11, and then Mouse Turn with 11, and also uh, six rebounds and a two box per game, which is what we wanted him for. Shot 38% from three. Like, what? that's what we wanted, right? Like, we wanted. Uh, Miles Turner shoot threes next to uh, Zion Williamson, which is why I think he's probably the most ideal center to play 
next is Zion, to be honest with you. But uh, I don't know if the Pacers are going to be willing to give him up. And I don't know if the Pelicans are going to be willing to offer whatever they want for him. So uh, this is what the Thunder's roster looks like as we're facing them in the first round. Let's go ahead and see if we can beat them. They have Lamarcus Aldridge, which is kind of funny. And Okay, well, yeah, I can't say I'm shocked. <sighs> okay, well, the Knicks going to win the championship, so that tells you something about this simulation. Like, what the... F Dude, I just... 58-24, then we lose to the eighth seeded Thunder. Like, why do eighth seeds are... Why are eighth seeds so damn good in this game, man? I love this game so freaking much. All right, let's get... Let's just keep going, man. I mean, that was the first season, I guess. We have more room to improve. It's just... Like, really? Really? Like, we lose in the first round? Okay. Uh, what a, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and just get a new trainer. We're going to run it back with the same team, to be honest with you, because um, why would I change anything? We just went 58 and 24. I imagine the progression is going to only make us even better. So let's go ahead and see if we can grab a number 23 and number number, number 27. Uh, Jeevon Quinterly is here. I'm going to go ahead and grab him. And then at number 27, we're going to be selecting, um, let's see who comes up, Joshua Primo. I'll take Hasten Ward. Why not? So send me in on that. And we got uh, a lot of good rookies coming in, to be honest with you. Wow. We have a lot of young players to kind of make a more even aggressive offer for somebody, to be honest with you. So uh, moratorium day going into the free agency. Nobody I'm too worried about. Um, literally, to be honest, like, is there anyone that's just like super pissed off at their team and wants out like that might be like crazy to go get? Because it's in the cards that we can go do something like that right now. Because we have a lot of young players that we might be able to make a crazy trade right now. So, um, my sons don't have anybody. The Thunder just beat us. Uh, the Timberwolves just made the playoffs. So, I imagine Carly Towns is a lot happier there. So, I won't do that. Uh, the Blazers, fifth seed uh, or 15th seed in the West. So, if Damian Lord was more on the timeline of these guys, I would go for it. But since he's really not, I don't really think that makes a lot of sense for the Pelicans to go do that. Um, let's see. You got uh bradley bill's a free agent right now ben simmons is a uh the sixers just missed the playoffs uh and joel Embiid is somebody to consider untouchable or that would be a lot of fun <laughs> uh, bucks yeah not really seeing anything uh the bulls cavaliers obviously tatum jalen brown could be fun but i uh, don't really see those guys being available plus we have brandon ingram and then there's the clippers with paul george but i'm good on that um john collins Jim Butler, obviously, we're not going to get. Um, yeah, Donovan Mitchell, uh, they just made the playoffs. I mean, but they probably got bounced out in the first round or second round or whatever, like me. <laughs> but I don't really see anything too crazy that I, I want to go offer, you know, uh, a lot of players for just yet. But, you know, that could always come about, always could become available. But we'll just stick with what we got for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and straight to, straight to player regression because we have a lot of young guys. There is a there is a world where we can make a big trade the trade deadline if possible or just something along the lines of that or in the offseason because it's a lot easier to make trades in the offseason to be honest with you. But there is a lot of young players here. And there's also a lot of draft picks we have for the future. So I think we have definitely plenty of ammo to make a big, big trade if we really wanted to. So be on the lookout for that. But for now, it's going to roll with what we have. And hopefully this next season, we don't absolutely fold and lose in the first round by an AFC back is the first seed and i'm low-key very terrified because the first seed you're never safe in 2k man it is not the wave it is not the vibes you want sam van gunny coach of the year though all be a first team uh do we get like anybody from the pelicans representing yes zion williamson makes it and then that's it okay so no brandon ingram or anything like that uh alonzo does make an all defense first team though which is a w then all rookie team uh all rookie second team so first seed in the west man uh we did we decided not to make a big trade because honestly um, a lot of our guys are freaking killing it right now, bro. Miles Turner again, two blocks per game, shooting 36% from three. Uh, Lonzo Ball's up to a freaking 88 overall. Brandon Ingram's an 89. Zion's a 94. Uh, Jaden Springer's already an 89 overall. So like, there wasn't a trade to be made. Bradley Beal was available, and I thought about that one. But then again, I'm like, bro, Jaden Springer's kind of a lot younger, and he's doing the thing. So I don't know if I should trade him. I don't think that's really necessary. So a big trade could have been made. But we are playing the San Antonio Spurs. You have Jaron Jackson, Jonte Murray. Kenny Chandler, Derek White, Dem Vassell. We should beat them, but you never know with this game. So many current round, and we beat them in five. So we got out of the first round. Major W in this video. Now we get to play the Phoenix Suns. We have Reggie Jackson playing point guard, which is just not something that should be happening in today's league. He should not be a starter. Devin Booker, Mikhail, Jay Crowder, Aiton, Noah Zwell, Frank Kaminsky, Sarge, Cameron Johnson. 
Summoning current round and okay. Can we beat them in seven? Yes, we do. We're on to the second or to the Western Conference Finals, and then we get to play the Los Angeles Lakers. So I think we get a battle of Anthony Davis versus his former team, which is a great way uh, to square off, man. So, uh, my, you know, the, obviously there was the big trade. Brandon Ingram gets to face his former team. Lonzo does as well. Um, is I don't think Josh Hart's here anymore, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, a lot of good things happening. So let's go game by game here. Game one. They're up one to zero. So Anthony Davis takes advantage of his former team in game one. Dennis Schroeder dropped 32. That doesn't happen all the time. They're up two to zero. Not a good start. Uh, let's go in fix rotation and uh, let's see if we can make something better even happen here. So uh, Carol Lewis Jr. is out of rotation. Can we even the series up? We do win game three. Montreal 21 and 10. LeBron James and AD were very bad that game. Anthony Davis with nine points. Zion Williamson with 30. Here we go. Game four. They're up three to one. Not a good look, man. Do we come back from three to one deficit? I'm not sure. We do have the capability of doing it. We're also a very young team though. So um, I would not be surprised if we lost here. It is a very close game though here in game. F I think this is game five, if I'm not mistaken. So um, let's see if we can uh, win game five here and force game six. Uh, we are taking a little bit of a lead here at the end, but you know, obviously there's still plenty of time left on the clock. 123 to 131, 133 to 125. I think we've secured this W and we're forced into game six. Uh, Zion Williams with 31, LeBron James at 35. We're not going home just yet. Now we get to go to LA to see if we can do it again and force a game seven back home to New Orleans. 40 points in the first quarter is a recipe to win this game. 140 to 134, 33 and 16 from Zion, 29 and 9 from LeBron James. And just like that, here we are, game seven in New Orleans. This crowd would be bumping, man. This crowd would be absolutely bumping if this were to happen in real life. You got the Lakers. You get to play your former teammate, Anthony Davis. Not former teammate, but former uh, all-star, Anthony Davis. It is a very, very close game. Game sevens, man. LeBron James' legacy is on the line here. Can imagine a young team comes back from a 3-1 to one deficit on him? It would not look good on LeBron James' record, man. 111-114. Very close game. Back and forth game. I think I jump in here soon. I think I jump in, man. Because I do not want to... Let the CPU decide my fate here. It is a one-point game with two minutes left. I'm jumping in, man. I'm absolutely making sure I secure this W. 125 to 124. We got LeBron James guarded by Nikel Alexander-Walker, which I don't absolutely love, but it is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and get some help. LeBron James with the floater. It's fine, though. We're totally fine. Let's give this to Lonzo Ball. And uh, I don't love the rotation we have out here right now, but... Uh, I thought, okay, I feel like Zion Williamson is the way to go here. Because I feel like no one's going to stop him at the rim, right? Like, I feel like I could just do that, and no one's going to stop that, right? I think that's what I'm going to do. Anthony Davis is not going to be able to catch Zion, man. Man is speedy. All right, here we go. Lonzo, Dennis Schroeder. We need a good defensive matchup here. Zion Williamson almost got Montrezl Harrell going wide open to the basket. They're going to LeBron James. Got to pass it to Montrezl Harrell. I'm there. I get the steal. Let's go. Very nice defense on my part. Lonzo is open for three. I wanted to take it, but at the same time, I didn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to the basket. 128 to 127. We take the one-point lead. The crowd is absolutely going wild, even though I can't hear them because I never listen to game audio while playing this game, uh, or at least doing rebuilds. So let's go ahead. LeBron James, what are you going to do? You got the freaking clamper to kill Alexander Walker himself on you. All right, here we go. Um, Montrezl Harrell, you can shoot that. I don't even care, bro. Go ahead and shoot that. That's a good defense, and we get the rebound. Let's go. Nikel Alexander Walker, or not Nikel, Jackson Hayes with some good defense. I think I go to Zion here. Let him go to work. They were leaving Hayes kind of open. I let, they double me. That was a good double team by them. Not going to lie. LeBron James, absolutely going to drive here. Absolutely going to drive here. Uh, good defense on my part. AD's open for three. He misses it. That was his chance. Looks like the Anthony Davis of old. Here we go. Lonzo Ball driving to the basket. They leave me open. 130 to 127. The Lakers are absolutely going to call a timeout here, I imagine. Come on. Not yet. Nope. They're going to roll the dice. Okay. Here we go. 130 to 127. LeBron James needs a three. Nikel knows it. I'm going to go ahead and back up on him. LeBron James getting a screen from AD. LeBron going to the basket. Oh my goodness, Nikel blocked him. Oh my goodness, what a block by Nikel Alexander Walker. Jackson Hayes at the free throw line. Makes the first one, makes this a four point game. Here we go, second free throw. Makes the next one, yes he does. Lakers call a timeout. They need to talk things over. They're down five and they might lose to this New Orleans team. Anthony Davis is absolutely in shambles right now. Probable tonight with 34 points, 15 of 20 shooting. 
Anthony, they're going to go to Dennis Schroeder here, it looks like. I'm going to make sure I don't let anybody. LeBron James going to drive to the basket. We almost block him again, but he does get the basket. Okay. Um, I don't know who my best free throw shooter is right now. I'm going to assume it's Jane Springer, so I'm just going to go ahead and get past it to him. And uh, we'll go ahead and throw him at the line. So let's see if we can make the first one. And just like that, we do. And they don't have a timeout, so we can make this a four-point or a five-point game again. That's awesome. So five-point game once again. They need a quick bucket. We know it. I'm going to have Zion guard LeBron. Why not? Ingram, switch me. Switch me. Switch me. Uh, Schroeder's wide open. I Oh, my goodness. Jackson Hayes is out here just throwing haymakers, bro. They're going to foul Zion, of course. Uh, Andy Davis has to foul Zion. Let's go. Andrew Davis and Zion could have been teammates, man. They could have been teammates, but AD said, no, thanks. Here we go, Zion. Boom, just like that. 136 to 129. LeBron James going to dribble it up, but it's too late. It looks like we have the Western Conference Finals secured in our bag, and we're going to the NBA Finals. LeBron James for three. Going to miss it, and just like that, LeBron James' legacy is over. It's over. I'm just kidding, but hey, we uh, made them blow a 3-1 to one lead. Miles Turner wasn't even addressed for the game. Let's freaking go, bro. That's what I'm talking about. We absolutely came back and won this game. 3-1 to one deficit, won the series, and now we go on to the NBA Finals. Screen for quite some time, and 2K might be screwing me over here. I don't know what happens if I click quit, but one thing I will tell you is I have auto save off on this My League file, on this My NBA Finals. So, if uh, I click quit, what happens? Does it X me out of My NBA? Oh, it does. Yep, it sure does. And just like that, we lost it. See? Wow, we'll never know if the Pelicans would have won a championship. You know what? It's fine. I feel like we would have. I don't know who we would have played. The Pelicans absolutely would have won it, man. That's so annoying, man. That's so damn annoying. But you know what? We beat LeBron James and the Lakers. That in itself is a championship. I don't care. So, unfortunately, we... Yeah, like I said, guys, I have autosave off. That way, I don't have to keep doing the draft order. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very sorry, man. I'm sorry we weren't able to do the NBA Finals. Unfortunately, 2K... It's just freaking stupid, as we all know. But it is what it is, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video regardless. I'm excited at least that we were able to beat the Lakers. And we probably would have gone, would have went on to win the championship. But we'll never know. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. It's Crushables. I'm saying peace.